All right, so uh, in the previous uh, video, we already discussed um, uh, multiple, you know, uh, headlines and um, which helped us realize the, the limitations of GDP per capita as a measure of standard of living, right? So we said that, um, you know, it doesn't, as an average variable, it doesn't show us any uh, variation in income. So um, the un, uh, equal distribution of the income, right, for example, uh, or the inequality um, are totally left out, okay, by just looking at the GDP per capita. Also, uh, we discussed that um, because the government has no knowledge about the underground economy, um, so GDP per capita, um, of course, cannot show anything about that, right? And we also talk about the air pollution, okay, or the environmental quality um, are, you know, left out um, by just looking at GDP per capita. And it has no way to show uh, the work-life balance, okay? Uh, again, all of these uh, could uh, be arguably, you know, essential to our standard of living, but cannot really uh, be captured or directly captured by a GDP per capita, right? So um, that part of the discussion may, um, you know, make you believe that, oh, so GDP per capita is a very poor measure of standard of living, right? Because a lot of things uh, should be covered, uh, cannot be covered by GDP per capita. Right now, here um, I also want to uh, show you several uh, plot uh, scatter plot, okay, uh, of the cross country data, and let's say if um, GDP per capita is um, a decent measure of standard of living. Okay, of course it's not perfect, as already discussed, but let's say let's lower our bar and see if if it's a decent. Um, measure of standard of living. The very first one here, um, oh, by the way, um, these, I made these um, graphs uh, from the website called GapMinder, uh, G-A-P-M-I-N-D-E-R, GapMinder. Uh, if you're interested, you can go over there and you can make your own. It's super easy, okay? As I said then, you know, um, the, these uh, gap minder graphs um, have, you know, oftentimes have a multi dimensionals. Okay, so um, here, as you can see, that the horizontal axis is the income which is measured by GDP uh, per capita, okay, uh, with the inflation adjustment. And the vertical axis is a life expectancy, okay, uh, which measures, you know, a typical. Uh, citizen in that economy is expected to live uh, for how long, okay, a number of years. And uh, the number in the background here, tw uh, 2022, that's the year of data, okay. And um, you also see, you know, this um, bubbles or circles, each represent one country, okay. And the size of the bubble represent their population, okay. Um, for example, these big ones are China and India, okay? And the color of the bubble represent their um, continent, their geographical uh, location, okay? So the red ones are, are um, Asian economies, and the uh, um, green ones are, are American uh, economies, uh, including the North American and South American economies, okay? Uh, the yellow ones are European economies, and the blue ones are Africans. All right. Um, the size is actually, the size and geographic location um, are not important here for this part of the discussion. Okay, But again, GapMinder, you know, when they make the graph, they, you, they have these kind of the fancy dimensions. Okay. All right. So here... Uh, the life expectancy is actually a pretty commonly used measure of standard of living, okay? Because how long you're going to live depends upon many things, 
um, your income, your um, you know the uh, wealth is one, right? But other things like education, like you know work-life balance, uh, environmental quality, um, you know the access to healthcare treatment, all of these uh, could be directly or indirectly measured by your life expectancy. Okay. Now the most important thing um, is here, as you can see, that there's a pretty clear uh, positive correlation between these two. Right between the GDP per capita and life ex expectancy. In other words, the higher the income measured by GDP per capita, the higher the life expectancy. Okay, or put it differently, um, in the richer economies, people tend to live longer. Okay, all right. So this is the first one. Um, the second one. Uh, shows the relationship between again income, uh, GDP per capita on uh, horizontal axis, and then vertical axis is the gender ratio of uh, mean years in school. Uh, in other words, uh, here uh, it's the uh, women's uh, the um, uh, mean years uh, of school, like how many years they actually. Uh, received uh, the schooling education uh, divided by the men's um, mean years. So the um, as you can see that um, if the number because it's expressed as a percentage, so that if the number is one hundred percent, that means you would find um, you know the um, uh, percentage of women in the school is equal to the percentage of men. Okay, so that's um, you know uh, completely equal. Okay, between uh, genders, and um, here the lower this value means more unequal. Okay, in other words, a lot of uh, girls are actually um, not in school. Okay, did not receive the schooling education. Now, once again, here you find a, a decent um, upward. Um, trend line here you could imagine right uh, in other words there is a, a positive relationship here probably not as strong as the previous one okay between the income and life expectancy but uh, there is uh, a positive correlation for sure okay and um, so that means you know the, in the higher income economies um, the gender uh, ratio of the mean school years uh, tend to be higher. Okay, in other words, um, the the um, right to education is more equal uh, between uh, men and women. Okay. All right. The next one I want to show you is again on the horizontal axis. That's a GDP per capita. Uh, um, the vertical axis is the corruption perception index. Okay, which we briefly talk about, um, I believe, at the beginning of the uh, semester, right? Now, here, um, the by the way, the data is from 2017, and you'll find that, uh, once again, there's a, a positive correlation, right? may not be linear completely, or may not be as strong as the uh, very first one we discussed, but there is a positive correlation. In other words, in the higher income economies, uh, the Corruption perception index tend to be higher, which means uh, those economies are more transparent and suffer less from uh, corruption. Okay. Um, there's one more uh, gap minder chart I want to share with you, which is a relationship between the income measured by GDP per capita and happiness score. Believe it or not, there is a a, a bunch of survey. Out there, you know, asking people how happy they are in their life. Okay, and then um, we find this, you know, national level the happiness score, and as you can find that here, um, there is a positive correlation between the GDP per capita and the happiness score. Um, put in differently, in the higher income uh, economies, people tend to say they are happier. Okay. Now, why I want to show you these four um, gap minder charts, the reason is 
I want to tell you that even though you know GDP per capita does not directly cover happiness, gender inequality of education,、um, corruption, life expectancy, but GDP per capita is highly correlated with these、um, aspects of our life. Okay, in other words. Even you cannot see, you know, these other th- aspects、uh, being directly captured by GDP per capita, but we are confident to say that GDP per capita、uh, directly or indirectly measures、um, the standard of living. Okay, in other words, it is a decent measure of it. Actually, there's a very big strength of GDP per capita as a measure of standard of living. Which is about the、um, availability of data, okay? Because the government reports the GDP and the population data, so we can easily calculate the GDP per capita for almost all economies on this planet for many years. Okay. However, when it comes to, for example, like the、um, gender inequality, like air pollution, like、uh, corruptions, if you go back to nineteen. 90s, 1980s, 1970s. Many of these variables didn't. We do not have any data. Okay, especially you know for developing countries. So、um, if you want to know, you know what happened、uh, for corruption, air pollutions in these economies back in 1980s, 1970s. Probably GDP per capita is the last resort. Okay, is the one you can rely upon. All right.、Uh, once again, let's、uh, wrap up this part of the discussion. So, GDP per capita is not a perfect measure, but it's probably a decent measure of standard of living. Okay. All right. So here we can conclude this、uh, chapter, which,、um, as we said, measures the nation's income.、Um, we start with、um, the five key phrases in the definition of、uh, GDP. Okay. And then we talk about the difference between GDP and GNP,、okay? uh, which also help us, you know, understand this inflow outflow of the foreign direct investment, right? And then we talk about the components of GDP and the calculation of nominal versus real GDP, okay? And、um, finally, we talk about the GDP per capita as a measure of standard of living, okay? So here、uh, we already finished our discussion about how to measure a nation's output. Okay, and in the next chapter we're going to start talking about、um, the labor market and unemployment. Okay, you probably noticed that you know in the textbook you know、uh, the next chapter should be about the cost of living, but I want to discuss that after we finish unemployment and labor market. Because when we talk about the cost of living, we already, you know,、um, entered this monetary economy. Okay, and so I want to finish the discussion of the real economy and、uh, labor market or unemployment is definitely part of the real economy. Okay, now once we finish that, we we can start talking about monetary economy. We can later talk about the money market as well. Okay, all right. So that's it for this.、Uh,